For most of us, the year 2000 went by without glitch or problem. Most of us were so drunk that even if a plane had fallen out of the sky and landed a few feet away, we'd barely have noticed. So what was all the uproar about? A general state of either denial, complacency, the tension, elevators may stop, the anxiety, heat may vanish. Did actually anything happen on that fateful Friday night of December the 31st, 1999? Well, first let's have a quick refresher of the backstory. What was the Millennium Bug? How did it come about? The answer to that lays mostly in limited memory and sometimes just through lazy programming. You see, back when memory was an actual constraint, when code was as bare to the bones as it could be rather than layered up in level upon level of higher and higher level programming, a year being represented by two digits rather than four was a big thing, literally. Shaving two characters off 1980 so that it was stored as 80 instead of 1980 saved two bytes of memory. This meant that more RAM could be freed up, less storage space was required, and things like databases could be reduced in size significantly. I mean, everyone knew that 80 meant 1980, so the 19 in front of that year could be assumed and even hard-coded into the computer's hardware or the software running on it. 2080 was 100 years in the future, and by that point we'd all be flying around in hover cars and have chips implanted in our minds, so that wouldn't matter. In fact, the year 2000 didn't even matter, that was also years in the future. But before we all knew it, we were in 1999. And to everyone's surprise, lots of legacy computer systems made years before were still in use. And those legacy systems, of course, couldn't accommodate for the year 2000. When that digital dial clicked over, it would read 00, zero and be interpreted by the computers and their associated software as the year 1900. At one end of the scale, this would mean that the date on your computer was 100 years out. It would be the 1st of January 1900 rather than 2000. That's not really a big deal. You knew the real date. Your mind wasn't going to hallucinate Art Nouveau decoration around you with Queen Victoria leading our country into the next century. But there were also more embarrassing problems. Company letters would be sent out 100 years out of date. Train station signs would be 100 years out. Maybe your date calculations would be out if you were using an early version of Microsoft Excel. These were potentially problematic, but more amusing than anything else. The real scaremongering was that missile systems could get confused and launch strikes in self-defense in a Judgment Day style scenario, or that plane navigation equipment could fail and 747s could just fall out of the sky. In hindsight, this seemed ridiculous, but these were real fears spreading throughout the population, aggravated as always by the fear-mongering tabloids of the time. So did anything actually happen, or was it as smooth sailing as we perceived it to be? Well, here are 10 of the most significant global issues we faced. Number 1. The US official timekeeper, the Naval Observatory, reported the date as 19100 on its website. Yes, we did have websites back then, they looked like this. Number 2. The system for collecting small plane flight information failed in Japan, but thankfully no planes fell from the sky. Number 3. Australian bus ticket machines failed. Number four, the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago couldn't transfer $700,000 in tax payments. However, it was made successfully the next day. Number five, Apple produced software used by Dutch bank customers prevented people from post-dating their electronic payments. Number six, seven nuclear reactors in the US had minor glitches relating to plant support, but no explosions. Number 7. Microsoft Internet Explorer and Hotmail displayed incorrect dates for the Get Year command, resulting in the year of 3900 being displayed. Number 8. A customer at New York State Video Rental had a bill for $91,250. This was the cost for renting The General's Daughter, and that's the film, not an actual General's Daughter, for 100 years. Number 9. South Korea summoned 170 people to court on the 4th of January 1900. And number 10. United States spy satellites transmitted unreadable data for three days. Humorously, this problem was caused by a patch designed to fix the Y2K bug, but instead just mangled the data. So, it's pretty much as we thought, nothing serious really happened, and in fact potentially the most serious issue was due to a fix rather than the bug itself. So aside from that hiccup, maybe the amount of work and money we invested into fixing the bug prevented anything serious from actually happening. 
Maybe without all that planning and work, we really would be in a dystopian society in something akin to the opening scenes of Terminator. Well, Russia spent approximately 200 million preparing for the Millennium Bug throughout the entire country, mostly by businesses, and a fair wedge of the government's small contribution being purely on promotional material. But all of this was just 2% of the United States bill. Russia also didn't really bother with the situation until 1998, whilst other countries had been working on it for years. The end difference? Nothing. You might think that Russia being further behind technologically might be the reason, but in fact, that should have made it worse. Various dilapidated computer systems from the 70s, along with clones of Sinclair Spectrums and IBM hardware, was in use at the turn of the century. This older equipment should have posed more of a threat to the continually updated systems in other Western countries. But the solution for Russia was just to ignore the glitches or change the system clocks back to 1970 rather than 1999. Problem averted. The Millennium Bug is widely regarded as being blown out of proportion. The phrase better safe than sorry might spring to mind, but the cynical amongst us might also suggest that the tech industry may have over-exaggerated the problems just a little. I mean, it was pretty good for business after all. But it's not all plain sailing from here. It's touted that the year 2038 will pose a similar problem for us. You see, the original Unix time data types were stored as 32-bit integers, representing the number of seconds since the 1st of January 1970. 2038 will herald the year that the signed integer will exceed its 32-bit constraints. Problems have actually already been reported, such as AOL server software, where timeout values were calculated past the 2038 date, leading to overflow errors. This was corrected by changing the timeout to a more suitable figure. But it begs the question, will we see further problems this time, or will everything be hunky-dory? I guess only time will tell. Thanks for watching this recap on the Millennium Bug. Plenty of videos to come in the future, plenty already done. Click one below, contribute to my Patreon if you want to support the channel, subscribe, share, give it a thumbs up, whatever you fancy. In any case, thank you very much for watching, and as always, have a good night. Here's a checklist to help you, your family, and your community prepare for Y2K. Do you have at least a three-week supply of water on hand? Do you have at least a three-week supply of food ready? Do you have hard copies of all your important documents? Do you have emergency independent lighting, such as flashlights? Since Y2K will happen in the dead of winter, if you live in colder climates, do you have emergency heating methods? or other means to stay warm, as well as sleeping bags, heavy quilts, heavy coats, thick gloves, thermal underwear, and socks.